everyone feels my coming at ya. I saw this tweet recently from Stone Fox and VRTK about some five year anniversary NFTs, uh, which made me realize that, oh wait, we started around the same time and so this channel has been around for about five years, which means it's probably due for a five year anniversary video. Otherwise, this is just gonna be a pretty chill video. I just threw together some bullet points that I just kind of wanted to ramble through. Just reflect on really the past, present, future of the channel and, and VR. Overall, I think things are going overwhelmingly positively, which I think is really exciting to see. Don't wanna really stress too much on the negative components because everyone loves to talk about the negative and no one loves to talk about the positive. So without further ado, uh, why not just start with uh, the, the, the Kickstarter of the video, right? Which is VRTK, talking about the past. I mean, it's crazy to see how far VRTK has evolved over, over the past five years, and just in general VR tooling. I mean, you think back to the good old days with the DK2s, and at least for me, they're, they're DK people who are trying it out with the DK1s. I, I wasn't part of that crew. Just thinking about the DK2 days, the pre-HTC Vive days, and you just had this like Steam VR SDK that was kind of hobbled together, <laughs> if you ask me. I mean, to be honest, Steam VR hasn't really changed all that much, but it was the kind of the wild, wild west in terms of, okay, how do you actually kind of think about putting together some sort of application that makes sense in the context of VR. What are the, the prefabs you want to use? How do you design those interactions? What are the most intuitive things to, to, to build? I mean, something even today, which is pretty simple as teleportation, was not even like kind of intuitively thought through as far as how you might go about designing that. And in that sense, it's really awesome to see how that tooling has evolved over the last five years. But to be honest, I mean, even though it's evolved a ton, it's still not super easy to get into the space by any means. And, and sometimes I almost feel like you, you suffer from the reverse problem, which is there's a lot of different toolkits that are out there and it's not not necessarily as obvious where to, to begin with any of these toolkits, right? Those problems aside, which I think will ultimately address themselves in some shape or form, things have definitely come a long way and have standardized quite a bit, which is really good to see. And I think one, one of the interesting things now that I'm thinking about it is because of this move towards six off and heads and hands, as kind of that de facto requirement for VR, you've kind of left to the wayside all of the other types of devices and you can really kind of hone in on the design paradigms that are specific to kind of room scale, where you have uh, a six off headset track controller, positional track, positional hands. It's a lot more standard in that regard, which means that you can design the toolkits to match those design standards, which I think is, really convenient, at least in terms of knowing the scope of what you have to build, as opposed to you got to build for headsets that don't have any controllers to ones that have the read off controllers to ones that support full PC VR. A lot of that has standardized, which is, I don't think inherently a bad thing. I, I, I do kind of feel like it's a little early for that to become the de facto standard for VR in terms of all VR just only needs heads and hands. I think there's a lot of room still for innovation as far as input goes, but for simplicity's sake, I, I, I don't think that's a bad thing for the, the tooling and the hardware to kind of mature over that five year period. On a related note though, uh, it is still crazy to me looking back at previous videos and oftentimes meeting folks at conferences and seeing folks that have watched my really old videos, like the bow and arrow one from almost five years ago at this point in modern times and still saying that it is helpful to them. I kind of feel like that's a blessing and a curse a little bit in the sense that I'm really excited that those videos helped get more folks into VR, but at the same time, it's also a little worrying that uh, 
people are still <laughs> using those as references. And I mean, I, I guess it's a good thing because that means they're at least relevant, but it also seems like kind of a concerning thing because you, you would hope that a lot of that tooling has also matured and is more accessible to, to folks to make at least the mistakes I made in the past a lot easier to implement. Um, so in that sense, I, I, I do think to, to summarize that we have a lot of room to grow when it comes to tooling, but overall it, it seems really positive uh, the, the direction that everything has been going on, whether it's um, OpenXR, whether it's VRTK, whether it's MRTK, you name it, right? It, it seems that there, there's more tools than ever to really make that happen. Moving a little bit into the present now, and present I'm gonna use loosely here in, in, the, in the sense that kind of between 2018 and 2020, I didn't really upload a ton. And um, I, I mean, that there, there are a lot of reasons for that, some of which I can't even go into here. Uh, otherwise we'd be here for hours. But I, I think that was kind of one of those times where I was really personally focusing a lot on stability, which I don't, regret by any means and I think was incredibly valuable to get me to where I am right now where I'm kind of I think even more excited for all of the innovations that are about to happen within the next several years um, but kind of in that time I think VR has kind of grown in it and, and which we talked a little bit about in, in terms of tooling uh has grown and kind of matured over that kind of just short really if you think about a two two and a half year time period where you have the quest kind of explode it's become basically this de facto vr headset for better or worse and uh it's allowed a lot more developers to start to at least consider making the jump into vr full-time which i think is exciting to see, uh, definitely, for sure, right? Um, I do think as a caveat, and I think this is where I can kind of tie the present a little bit, it almost seems like we've, in a sense, I, I, I don't want to use the word plateaued, but I feel like some of the design principles kind of seem to be half-baked, and you are starting to see a lot uh, less risk taking which is a good sign in terms of maturity but i also feel like it's a little bit early in that regard right it seems like almost everyone has kind of de facto standardized into it's gotta either be a walk with the joystick which i abhor to be honest, uh, or or it is teleportation, and there there's a lot less room it seems like for kind of creative titles to to really kind of bloom, and and as a result, because those are higher risk, you don't see them as often, uh, which is I feel like a little unfortunate compared to the earlier days back in 2016 where. I, I mean, to be fair, I think a lot of the problems were easier, but you would tend to see a lot more innovation in regards to designs uh, that people were experimenting with for, for their VR titles, which exists in, 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 the, in the present for sure, but I think it gets overshadowed by your Beat Sabers and your Population Ones, which I'm kind of hoping that that kind of indie spirit kind of kicks back a little bit in some shape or form in the future, but uh, obviously I totally get the the business implications that, that are needed to, to run a successful VR indie business. And I, I don't blame anyone who feels like they have to take less risks to, to make sure that their company is stable, right? Because I think ultimately, if you're looking at VR uh, maturing and growing over the next five to 10 years, uh, you, you want some sort of form of stability now so that you can really capitalize on that as that continues to grow. And I, 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 I don't think that's a bad thing at all. And then moving into the future, just some thoughts that I've been kind of thinking about. One with the channel, to be honest, I don't really know what the future of the channel is gonna look like now that I've, I've been obviously kind of recently spending a little bit more time looking at networking, 
whether that's in the multiplayer sense or in the context of render streaming, which I'm really personally excited about. I think there's a lot of opportunity there to really expand the space of being able to escape all of these closed gardens that we're starting to see emerge, at least at the consumer level. Um, and while I think the technology is not perfect, I think it starts to open up a lot of those doors really when it comes to cloud XR and edge computing, which I personally am just really excited to, to see how that, that ultimately matures. There's a lot of problems there that is kind of a whole separate issue of, of a video, but I, I think there, there's a lot of opportunities there as well. Um, and so I, I think from a, from a practical standpoint, the next several videos are gonna be on, on that topic, but where it goes from there, not not really sure, but I think if, if I'm looking at ways to escape walled gardens, that's one route you could potentially take, which is why I think I'm more inclined to exploring the opportunities kind of in that space. I kind of hinted at this in the present point, but like I do kind of think if we're looking at VR as a consumer market uh, emerging, I, I still think we're still kind of five years out from really kind of seeing that full maturity. Um, and in that sense, I think we're still pretty early on in what VR is and what it could become. I think everyone knows the problems and there's no real reason to dive kind of fully in depth with them. But I, I think there, there's definitely a lot of opportunity now for competitors to enter the market, not necessarily even on the consumer side, but I think exactly what HTC is doing and, and sure they got a lot of flack for their whole marketing about consumers, but then entering the business space. I, I think what they're doing is actually really smart to be honest, and I don't think they deserve that flack at all. It's just kind of the state of where the consumer VR space is, and that's fine. But from, from a practical standpoint, there's a ton you can do on the enterprise side with VR. And I think that's really something I want to see more of emerge when I'm thinking about even Cloud XR or just enterprise in general, I think you, the, there's a heavy focus in the present around gaming and VR, which is fine, and I think that's overall healthy, but at least for me, I'm, I'm not an insane gamer by any stretch of the imagination. I, I do play games, but I'm not, it's not my main interest, right? And so it just kind of feels like I don't really have, at least on the consumer side, a real reason to, to use VR outside of gaming. And I kind of want to see some of that, those enterprise applications, whether it's in real estate, whether that's in medical, whether that's in um, art even, right? Uh, really start to mature. Um, and I think kind of, hopefully I'm kind of hoping that as the gaming space continues to grow, there'll be enough room for those enterprise applications at least to start moving into the consumer side of things, which I think would be really, really interesting to see. For the short term, I, I do still think there's a ton of money to be made on B2B applications that a lot of people are capitalizing on. It's just not talked about. Just to give a quick example, there's a company that I feel like most folks who are who say they would be dedicated to the VR space have never heard about called Sensorium. They're based in Europe. They're doing enterprise VR for concerts. And they are a really well-funded company, but odds are that most folks in the VR space, at least on the consumer side of VR, have never heard of them. Uh, at least I don't hear them talked about at all when it comes to VR Twitter or VR Facebook or Road to VR or anything like that. And it, granted, yes, they're still early, but the point being, they, they have a very heavy focus on the B2B and enterprise plays. And if you're in that space, there's not many people talking about that. Uh, and it's just funny to, to watch this dichotomy of a lot of successful companies that are in the, in the business side of VR doing really well, but no one talks about them. And then you have the consumer side, you have a handful of applications that 
that really steal a spotlight. Everyone talks about them, at least in terms of social media presence. Get kind of take a step back and look at VR. Those kind of hit consumer apps are really what everyone tends to focus on and not anything else. So weird dichotomy when I when I think about it, but I, I think it kind of goes to show that a lot of VR is also maturing in the shadows and will ultimately kind of merge from all these business innovations that are happening. And I think that the, also the, the funny point, and I think this is probably a good point to, to cap on, is speaking of that indie risk that we were talking about earlier, a lot of that I'm starting to see is actually happening within the enterprise space. And that's where you're starting to see kind of these innovations when it comes to trying out various different designs and techniques that they have the ability to take that risk because they have that funding to, to really kind of play around with the VR experience and really kind of tailor fit it to certain use cases, um, which you're not really able to do in the consumer side of things. And it's, it's, it's a weird, weird thing that it that I seem to see it happening right now. Uh, just because normally you expect that that kind of indie risk to happen on the consumer side, not really on the enterprise side, but just kind of the way things have emerged, it almost seems like it's happening more so on the enterprise side because that tends to be more stable. So I think hopefully kind of those innovations make their way into the consumer side of VR, but I, I expect that to kind of take a good five years, right, uh, for that hardware uh, to, cycles to play out, for the software cycles to play out, and for the overall market to continue growing and kind of allowing for that cross-pollination between the enterprise and consumer side of things. Overall, I think I'm really excited to see how the next five years play out. It's been also an amazing past five years here in the VR space, and I think there's there's a lot to really look forward to in terms of the trajectory of where everything is going. So thanks so much for watching. As I mentioned earlier, we'll be doing a lot more render streaming with VR coming in the very near term, which you should definitely look forward to. If you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next one. It's been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out.